everybody, how is it going? It's Jake here with Shot on My Phone. This week I had the opportunity to interview Fernando Silva and we got to talk about iPad Pros and using them as our main devices, all things like that. This is kind of a sequel to my last video on why can't laptops be more like smartphones and how I said that the iPad Pro is like right in the middle. So this is just the shortened version of that interview. And then we will have the full one released by Saturday. So stay tuned for that. And next week, my interview with Noah Herman comes out next Thursday. So stay tuned, make sure you subscribe, like, and let's get right into it. Okay, well, let's get this thing started. Let's do it. So just to start out, what is your main iPad Pro? What is your main iPad? Is it Pro, Air? Mm -hmm. uh, what's your main iPad? Any, okay, so. I mean, up until recently, it was a 2018 iPad Pro, but now I have the base model 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro. Nice. So 128 gigs, no no data, just Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. What do you mainly yeah. use your iPad for? Uh, everything. <laughs> uh, I mean, so obviously I do it for video editing, right, mm -hmm. and thumbnail editing. I don't record, I don't use a camera on the iPad pretty much ever. Uh, yeah, I do it for surfing the web, answering emails, um, obviously a lot of Netflix, a lot of YouTube. Actually, take that back. Not that much Netflix on my iPad. All YouTube. <laughs> Netflix, has to watch my TV, I'll be honest. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, pretty much anything from YouTube videos to answering emails to answering Slack, because I also use Slack for my 9 to 5 job. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then a lot of YouTube consumption. And then lately, with Apple Arcade and NBA 2K, I play that game every freaking day. Nice. On my iPad. And it yeah. runs pretty well? Dude, it runs amazingly. I mean, it's not, it's not a full version of 2K, but it has like a be a pro mode or whatever. You use your, so you, you use your iPad Pro for like everything. Aside from your phone, your iPad Pro is your, it, it's your life. It's every, yeah. everything. Absolutely. Same here. Yeah. Same here. Every, yeah. I don't have any other device aside from my iPhone and my iPad. So on that note, do you think it's overkill to use an iPad Pro if you're just going to use it for immediate consumption and notes? That's a great question. And an iPad Pro, if you're just literally going to watch video and take notes, yeah, it's overkill. Even right. like the 2018 11-inch base model? Yeah. If you're just going to watch stuff and take notes, it's overkill. Get Literally go buy a second-hand iPad like 10.2 or 9.7. Like if that's all you're going to do, that's all you need it for, and you don't mind having an older aesthetic, save the money. That's that's my thing. Like this, even for what I use it for, even with the 2018, what I was using it for was not enough to, to like even get halfway to what it could do, I think, yeah. in my opinion. Like the only issue I sometimes had with the 2018 model was I did have to reset LumaFusion a couple times, but I never lost any save data. Like I would literally just exit out of multitasking, and open it back up, and I'd be right back to where I was. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it was, I think it was more to do with like LumaFusion than it was on the iPad. Yeah. But like literally my iPad, like I almost kept it if it wasn't for the fact that I had this channel. Like I would return this M1 iPad Pro and get my 2018. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So I know you have a 9 to 5 and I know you use your uh, MacBook Air for that, but... Yeah. Would you ever, and I know you use your iPad for everything aside from that, but would you ever ditch your desktop computer, Mac or anything for your iPad Pro as your main device to do all of your computer work? And then why or why uh, not? Today I would not. It, like literally today I wouldn't. The only way I, would, I need secondary monitor support. I need to be able to, or like a real secondary monitor support or like real multi, like a pro level multitasking. Cause mm -hmm. I have... You know, I, for my nine to five job, I work for a marketing analytics company and we're building a ton of PowerPoints, running through a lot of Excel and sheet file or numbers files, whatever they're called, Google, whatever it is, the Google version of Excel. Yeah. And I have a lot of, so like I'll have like six or seven PowerPoints open at the same time where I'm copying data from one of them, moving into the other and vice versa. So the bit, it just has to do with, I need to be able to do more at one time. This, like if the day that I can plot my iPad into a USB-C or Thunderbolt hub, populates my main 32 inch screen, That'll be the day I don't need a MacBook Air. Because from a power standpoint, I don't need any more power. From a function standpoint, on the iPad itself, I don't need any more. I just need secondary monitor support to be, able, to be able to be efficient with like six or seven things at the same time, yeah. as opposed to just one or two. Like I said, like the biggest thing for me is a PowerPoint or even like Keynote or Google Slide situation. Like I need multiple where it's easy for me to grab one slide from PowerPoint, move it over to like the eighth PowerPoint I was working on half an hour ago. You know that what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that's the kind of situation that I need for the iPad to fully replace this MacBook Air to the right of me. So if you didn't have this job where you're using this application, you wouldn't need, you wouldn't need a MacBook. You would use your iPad for everything. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like if I was literally doing YouTube full-time, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. then 
I wouldn't need not, I wouldn't need a MacBook. But like from a computer device, I would only need the iPad. So right, what about you? How was how was your? Because you said you got rid of your computer, desktop, laptop situation, right? Yeah, I was using the MacBook Air from 2017. Mm-hmm. So it's not okay. that old. Yeah. I I hated it. I I've always hated the complex the complexity of computers in general. Mm-hmm. Like the iPad is essentially just a it it literally is just a bigger version of the iPhone. That's what it started out with. Yeah. And so Agreed. I know I know my iPhone <laughs> like the back of my hand. And so I know my iPad very well too. My MacBook was just, and all I ever used it for was note taking okay. for school and stuff. And when I finished yeah. school, like, I don't know, I played some games on it. I bought a game called XCOM 2 on Steam and mm-hmm. it ran horribly on that. I got, yeah. I got the previous version of that game, the first XCOM on the iPad and it ran amazing. This was the fifth generation iPad, uh, the 9.7 inches, and it ran fantastic. Touch screen, everything. I'd never touched it, I never used it, especially because I could everything I did on my MacBook, I could do on my phone or my iPad. Mm-hmm. And then when I got rid of my fifth gen and got the iPad Pro, the 11 inch, 2018, it was yeah. so great. Now when I started the channel, I upgraded to the 12.9 inch because I just wanted the bigger screen for the video editing. And I don't think I'll yeah. ever go back to a computer unless I'm ever in a circumstance like you said, where I, where I need a computer. Where, yeah. But even though I know iPadOS is limiting, it's not, it doesn't limit me. It doesn't limit my workflow. That's a good tweet, dude. You should tweet that out. I know the iPad is limiting, but it's not limiting me. <laughs> <laughs> I like that's that. That's, that's, my, yeah. that's my new motto. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's true, man. I mean, my, my thing with a lot of people with the iPad has always been, like, for the most part, you'll be able to get from point A to point B with whatever mm-hmm. you're doing. You just got to, you might need to learn how to get to point B in a different way. Yeah. You know? And a lot of it in the beginning was, yeah, I had to learn how to do things a certain way with the iPad, but it's because I wanted to, right? I wanted to make this thing my, my main computer. And I feel like a lot of people, like, unless, like you said, unless it's, like, easy for them to transition over, they're probably not going to do it in, until the iPad can fully replace from, like, a one-to-one standpoint their laptop. Yeah. Totally. I think that's that's what it's going to be. But then also, like I just this, like a lot of people saying, like Apple's not going to put Mac OS on their iPads because it's going to cannibalize MacBook Air sales, right? But like, dude, you can get a brand new MacBook Air for nine hundred dollars off the Education Store. A baseline iPad Pro with a Magic Keyboard with an Apple Pencil is fourteen fifty. Yeah, that's. So I don't think it's cannibalizing anything, you know. So what do you? Th- that's, that's my two cents. What do you think of? That because I've heard so you he talks about a lot about how he really wanted Mac, Mac OS to be on the iPad and then MKBHD is the opposite he's a, he doesn't want Mac OS on the iPad he wants mm-hmm. iPad OS just to be better yeah. what what side are you on um so my I'm kind of more on the MKBHD side like I don't want Mac OS on my iPad Pro but I, what I want is again I'm gonna keep reiterating like I want like I don't even care about Pro level apps because for me my apps are Pro enough. Right, yeah. like LumaFusion Pro enough. Oh yeah. I use like Pixlr and the right, like literally the generic native photos app to edit my thumbnails. But uh, but like again, the main thing that I want is like a pro level multitasking and floating windows. And it doesn't need to be like a normal desktop computer, right? Like I the way Apple Im- implemented cursor support with thirteen point four, unreal. Because it was like my my reasoning is it was familiar enough where the learning curve wasn't that great, but it was different enough to make it unique to the iPad. Mm-hmm. And like nobody else has done anything like that, yeah. right? But it wasn't hard for somebody to slap the iPad onto a Magic Keyboard and start using it like a laptop. Yeah. So that's what I want. I want something that's like unique to the iPad, but as familiar as like it. So it's like when somebody does come from a desktop, they don't feel like they're losing any functionality or they're like doing something totally new. So mm-hmm. it's familiar enough to for desktop users, but new enough and unique enough for iPad users. If that makes sense. Yeah. To add to that, I think at the same time keeping it simple. Yeah. Um. Simplicity. I I never got to use. Mac OS Big Sur because I downloaded Big Sur on it and it just kind of made the thing crash really hard. What was before Big Sur, like Mojave or something? I don't even know. And I, I hated it. I, it was, it was too complicated. I couldn't just, you know, click the notes app. I had to go, I, there wasn't a, at the time there wasn't even a notes app. I had to go to like text edit or something Yeah. or pages. And it, it's just overly complex. The iPad is simple. I like mm. things dumbed down for me Yeah. <laughs> and it's just. It's bite size. It's easy to use. My mom, who's not a techie, can grab an iPad and just her brain automatically connects that it looks like a bigger version of her phone, and she can use it. Yeah. But then on her on her desktop computer, she doesn't. She only tell. And I mean, yeah, that's what the iPad was for, dude. Like, 
<laughs> Why do you think people throw iPads at their like two year old kids to distract yeah. them? Yeah. I'm not gonna throw a laptop at them. <laughs> you know? I'm just imagining a two year old with a MacBook. Yeah, right? Like that's not gonna work. They're gonna mess that up. With an iPad fully protected, just throw it to the kid with a video on, they'll be entertained for hours. Uh, yeah. <laughs> man, that's funny. What do you think about video editing on an iPad in general? Using LumaFusion or whatever else is out there. Um, so I did. I think I made my first video on iMovie just because it was free, and oh. I was like, I don't really remember what I'm doing on the video editing side. Because again, I'm not like you've seen my videos. My videos aren't like cinematography. They're not like amazing from a cinematographer. Like it's literally just a roll me talking, and then usually some B roll or like some top down view. I got a little creative in some videos. Yeah. So iMovie for my first video, and then LumaFusion then on, and like. Yeah, there's some things that I wish would be a little bit easier, right? Like emotion tracking, maybe a more robust plug-in library for me to be able to do like cool like YouTube call-outs and like follow me on Twitter call-outs and things like that. But for the most part, it's awesome. Like I don't really, there isn't too much that I'm missing. And I know that obviously Final Cut Pro has way more plugins. And I remember using Final Cut Pro during my like fitness days because that's what I used. It was a 2017 or 2016 MacBook Pro. It was the first one with a touch bar. Nice. That, that's what I used. Um... But yeah, I mean, I mean, LumaFusion has been awesome. There's nothing really missing to it aside from external SSD support. That is the one thing that I know would be a huge game changer. But for that's a coming. Lot of people. It is coming supposedly. For anybody that wants just a tiny bit more than iMovie, it is, you know, LumaFusion is only anywhere from 20 to 40 bucks, depending on when you buy it. It's mm -hmm. so cheap and it's a one-time purchase. Even if you want to use it as like an educational and a learning tool, LumaFusion is freaking amazing. Yeah. I stand by, by LumaFusion. I have never vid uh, edited video before in my life. Mm -hmm. And so when I first started this channel two months ago, I edited my video and I, granted, like I'm technic, I'm tech inclined. I know tech stuff, but mm -hmm. I picked up LumaFusion immediately. It wasn't complicated at all. And it, it's granted, I don't do, you know, cin cinematography craziness. It's just, you know, yeah. me talking, uh, cutting out the ums and the ands and, and then adding in B-roll or music or intro, outro or whatever. But I figured yeah. it out easily. And I paid 30 bucks for LumaFusion. It was fantastic. And that was on my 2018 12.9 inch. Yeah. I loved it. From LumaFusion and Final Cut Pro, all the things, a lot of people are, I, I, we talked about this earlier, people are on one, either side of the spectrum. A lot of creators are hesitant to use their iPad Pro as their main device when it comes to video editing and YouTube stuff. Then a lot of people are the total opposite. Mm -hmm. Why? Why is that? Is it the smaller screen that the iPad has? Because you could use like a 16 inch MacBook Pro or I don't know. Cause like the new iPads have the M1, which again, limited by iPad OS, but. Yeah. Uh, like, so you're asking like, why are people so divided? About yeah. The yeah why, are, why are some people hesitant to use it? And then the other people are just gung ho. Like I am gung ho for the iPad. I will never use my MacBook again. I love my iPad. I think, I mean, I think it's just like, cause we're creature of habits, honestly. I don't think it's anything that like, one can do better than the other. And I think people are just so used to using like Final Cut Pro or Adobe Rush or Adobe Premiere on their MacBook Airs or Pro or whatever they're using that like, why go out of their way to learn a new software, right? Like why, why go out of their way, especially people that are using like high end laptops, like why go out of my way to get rid of my 16 inch $4,000 MacBook Air to get a thousand dollar iPad and learn a new software that's supposed to be inferior to Final Cut Pro. Yeah. Like that's probably what the mindset is, right? Which is like totally fine. I mean, I don't think I, I don't see myself going back to Final Cut Pro, you know, because that means I would have to run it off of my computer, and I don't really want to do that. I don't want to have to like learn to do that again. So for me, it's just like getting better at what I'm using, and then kind of getting better over time. Because like you said, I mean, it's just kind of like it's almost like the people of like Android versus Apple. Like usually, it's like the, where you started is what you have today. That's right? true. That's <laughs> you know? true. But for the most part, I mean, you said you had an Android and then with the iPhone, right? <laughs> But yeah. most people that have Android today started with an Android as their first phone, you know? It's just kind of whatever you start using first. No, I get that. Opinion. That makes sense. Yeah. So on Final Cut, how much is Final Cut? Because I, I looked it up recently. Final Cut Pro is like $300, right? Yeah. I think it's $299, $300. And LumaFusion? It's, it's, it's a, a one-time purchase, at least for now. It's a one-time purchase. But LumaFusion is... It has been for a while. LumaFusion is a $30 one-time purchase. Yeah. But you got to remember, I mean, there's definitely, like, an ecosystem behind Final Cut Pro. Like, I like, I like to see both camps, man. Like, I'm, I use I use LumaFusion because it's good for me. It's easy for me. Like you said, it's a, I think it's a dumbed-down version of Final Cut Pro. It really is, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it gets you it gets you past iMovie, which is, like, the bare bones. Like, iMovie is, like, the bare bones. Yeah. Right? And then LumaFusion is kind of, like, the moderate level. And then if you want to go crazy, go to Final Cut Pro. 
if you're still a beginner, you can still use Final Cut Pro, but you just won't be unlocking the other 95% of Final Cut Pro, mm -hmm. you know? Because, yeah, like I said, Final Cut Pro has a great ecosystem. There's millions of plug-in websites. There's, like, thousands of, of ways to, to I, don't, I don't even know what else you can do. Like, I know my buddy uses, like, 18 different, like, Final Cut screens. One for audio, one for video, one for, like, color correction, one for uh, his thumbnail that he's editing. At the, so it's, like, crazy. So there's, we can do way more on Final Cut Pro. But for me, it's, like, LumaFusion is a perfect balance between being dumb and smart at the same time, for lack of mm -hmm. a better term, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I get that. Because it can do everything Final Cut can do, but you just have to be a little bit more manual with it. Like, a, like yeah. a big thing is the motion, like being able to like blur something while it's moving is very time consuming on the diffusion. Like very time consuming. I can imagine. Because you have to do it frame by frame by frame by frame. Versus with Final Cut Pro, I'm sure there's a plugin, they just put it in, like move your mouse over where you want it covered, and then it'll like render it for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, Final Cut Pro has a lot of different features that LumaFusion doesn't have. Mm -hmm. But honestly, like I haven't ran run to any issues where I wish LumaFusion was more. Granted, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm only, you know, 20 videos in. I think the video I'm putting out tomorrow will be my 20th video. Nice. And that, oh, thanks. But <clears throat> I, so far I haven't run into any issues with LumaFusion. It's been very easy. It's been very, it's honestly fun to use. Mm hmm yeah, the, the only, and they're not issues, it's just like, like I said, it's just a little harder to do. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like once you want to, like once you get to like your 50th video, and like I said, you want to throw like those little cars that come in and say like, follow me on Twitter, or like, follow me. It's like, the, like those call out things. Yeah. There is like, they're like very hard to find for the Fusion. I've, I've noticed like, that. I have noticed right? that. Like I haven't been able to find a good one. I really haven't been able to find a web, good website or a good like person that I can even pay for, for from motion stuff, motion like basically yeah, motion graphics on, on LumaFusion is hard to create, but once you have it, it's easy to put it in LumaFusion. If that makes sense? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Makes sense. Yeah, those are the only things that I'm kind of missing a little bit. But again, I haven't gone out of my way to figure out how to do it myself, mm -hmm. so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna complain too much about it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and you've still been able to run a fairly successful YouTube channel off of an iPad Pro using LumaFusion. Mm -hmm. now, I'm not gonna say with no issue at all, but you've done it without without m m as much limitation as people make it out to be. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, all the, the only issues that I have while filming and recording are usually like human error, they're my fault. Like I forget to turn on the mic or something, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and things like that. But yeah, I mean, like I, like I said, like, z like from day zero to day today, like I've been on LumaFusion editing every single video. I think there's over 400 videos now on the channel, every single one done with LumaFusion. Uh, I do my intro, I do my outro, I have, uncopyrighted music i have like five six seven layers depending on the type of video that i'm doing they render and export super fast um i record in 4k 30 off the iphone sometimes 4k 60 for b-roll so it's thrown everything that i've yeah I've, it's, it's handled everything that i've thrown at it and then some i yeah. guess i would say yeah same mm -hmm. same yeah so you use your ipad as your main editing device mm -hmm. why did you go for that over the imac or macbook why, since you already have the MacBook Air, why don't you use that as well for your YouTube stuff? Uh, that's a great question. So I mean, the reason I chose the iPad is because... <clears throat> that's a great question. Because I did have a MacBook when I started the channel. I had a 16-inch MacBook Pro. Or not my bad, a 15-inch MacBook Pro before there were 16 inches. Because that's, that's the computer that I had when I first started the channel. And I had the pirated version of Final Cut Pro in there. I did. Nice. So why did I choose the iPad? I think it's because I wanted to see who's the, I watched somebody's video. <clears throat> it, dude, it might have been Noah Herman. Like, it might have been him from, like, two, three years ago. <clears throat> and it might have been, bring this up to him, it might have been the video that really first blew up for him. It was some sort of iPad video, him reviewing the iPad. And I thought to myself, like, yo, this thing. And then iPad OS 13 had just, the beta had just released. Is it, so the, it, had that, is it the video but, that he uh, did where he used his iPad for literally everything? I think so, yeah. He shot his video with the iPad. Yeah, that's the, that's the video that got me into his channel. That's the video that got me to message him to do this. Yeah, like that, I saw that video and I was like, when the iPad OS 13 beta was already, was already out, right? The, the public release wasn't out yet. And then so I had the slide overview, which made it kind of look like a desktop if you wanted it to. So I was like, you know what, man? Let me try to use this thing. Let me try to see if I can do everything on here. Right, at least from a creative standpoint, and then let me also see if I can do my nine to five stuff from here. Because mm -hmm. I had, because I had my MacBook, my MacBook Pro, which I really, honestly, at that point wasn't using too much because I had a Windows computer that work gave me, and I was using that for work. Right, 
So that computer was sitting idle. And yeah, so I used the Gen 1 iPad Pro, like I told you first, with LumaFusion. It worked. I made a couple videos on there, which had nothing to do with tech. They were like weird marketing videos or something like that, and it worked. So then I got the, you know, Gen 3 iPad Pro, and it just started working on that to see if, it could, if I can, like, continue to do more and more and more with the iPad to the point where, like, I didn't need my MacBook Air or my yeah. MacBook Pro. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, like, the iPad is, it was, because at that point, MacBooks were still with Intel processors, and MacBooks still... They didn't run that well, especially with the ones that I got. So I always went with the base model ones, right? Mm -hmm. And the iPad was just so much snappier. Everything was happening faster on the iPad, and that kept me on the iPad. I think. Yeah, <laughs> I get that. I get that. Yeah, I, yeah. It was. I love the iPad. I love the convenience of it. I love the two-in-one aspect of it now with the Magic Keyboard, and I agree. Mm -hmm. It's it is faster. It's snappier. Yeah, and, everything everything just happens faster. Even dude, I I had I bought. In I think it was April of 2020. It was during the pandemic. Peak pandemic. I went to Best Buy, got an Intel-based 2020 MacBook Air. Before, like two months before the M1 was announced. I think I spent like $1,400 on it because it was like a little bit above the base model. Dude, that computer was trash. That computer was terrible. I couldn't run any of my Microsoft apps. I couldn't use Teams. I couldn't use PowerPoint. I couldn't do anything on that computer. And then two months later, traded that. That, traded that computer in, took a fat L on the trade-in because I lost a lot of money on it, and then got the M1, the baseline M1 MacBook Air, and it runs so much smoother. So it's, Apple's doing something with these M1 chips, man. It's freaking crazy. Yeah, and even though it's limited on iPad OS, the iPad now has the M1, and it's I love it. Yeah, even with the Microsoft apps, dude. I made a video recently with Microsoft, which is kind of blowing up, which is cool. And dude, the apps, they open instantly, dude. In the apps, there's no loading time, there's nothing. They just open right away. It's not fantastic. The functionality of the app, that's up to Microsoft to do. But the apps run perfectly, yeah. you know? That's, I love that. Okay, yeah. so building off of that, mm -hmm. if you had to choose one, would you choose iPad OS or Mac OS? If I had to choose one, I'd probably go with iPad OS and then try to figure out try to make do with my, like, the reasoning why I need a MacBook Air, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. I'd probably figure it out. If I was, like, super forced into it, I'd probably lose a little bit of efficiency, but I could, I could get it done. Like, I can do my work, it's just a little bit slower. Yeah. With those situations, you know what I mean? That makes you need sense. to have multiple things open at the same time. But who knows, maybe that new, like, like, maybe I will go through my work day with the iPad, with that new app shelf feature, and kind of see what's going on there, and see if I can quickly move stuff around. So, we'll see. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so this was this is very interesting to me. A commenter commented this in uh, one of my videos in my reaction to iPad OS fifteen. Yeah. So he said to me, "This is this is interesting. All we wanted was Mac OS Touch for the iPad Pro, not just an accessory to the MacBook with universal control. Tablets are the future, not laptops. Right now, the M one iPad Pro is like Superman wearing a kryptonite belt." I think, wait, who, who made that comment? Because I feel like I got that same exact, that, that kryptonite belt sounds very familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I had it on that comment too. That's yeah. Funny. Um, that. It, it's, it's like a little, I mean, there's like some validity to that point for sure. You know? Yeah. A little, you know, because it is held back. iPad OS still isn't perfect. But I mean, I, I, I wonder like why Apple did that. Like why Apple didn't just... Not put Mac OS, but give us like secondary monitors, like real secondary monitor support. Mm -hmm. Like I, I just I don't know why Apple wouldn't do that, but there has to be a, a clear reasoning, and I don't think it's just a money grab reasoning. There has to be like something limiting the the iPad, yeah, from doing. It. Maybe but the thing is, what would it be? What would it be? I have no idea. Maybe you know? COVID had something to do with it. The change maybe, in the workflow. Or maybe they're just not happy with maybe they put something together and they're just not happy with it yet. You know, yeah. Apple needs to protect everything because they're <laughs> Apple. You know, they're always like 18 years late to the party, but they do it better than everybody else when it comes out. That's the you reason know? why there's no calculator app or weather app on the iPad. Because <laughs> they haven't made a calculator app good enough for the iPad. <laughs> yeah, that's what, Craig, that's what Craig Federici said when Mark has Brownlee interviewed him. Yeah, yeah, no, I do remember that. That's Dude, I, I, was, I was trying to think of maybe creating a calculator app with the new Swift Playground, but I don't, nice. I don't think I'm too dumb for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, don't want to take the time. Man. That's great. It's like yeah, because like I mean, it's Apple. They've invented. They've they're they're very innovative. I think 
Why? Yeah. How hard is a how hard is a calculator app for Apple? Is it gonna be like a widget, dude, or something? You know? <laughs> I know. We don't even have interactive widgets. I hate that. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like, but like, when would you interact with a widget? Like, I guess the only one I could think of is like a to do list when you're like done with something. Like a music widget, you could play pause. True. 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 But I mean. You can always you can also do that from your headphone. You can do that from your home lock screen. You can do that from your watch. Yeah, <laughs> yep, exactly. You know, but so, aside from that, that that's a great point. I don't I don't see like the weather widget. You just need to look at it. Yeah, the to do list is the only one. I guess yeah, and the plane pause. Like the plane pause maybe on your iPad because it's like a stationary thing. Mm-hmm. You know, but. But yeah, other than like a to-do list where you check off what you did today, I don't know what else would even interact with. An email widget. I had, I used a OnePlus 7 Pro recently. I just, okay. I really wanted the Android experience because I haven't used Android since the Galaxy S4. And <laughs> okay. I had a email widget and I could scroll, the widget was interactive. I could scroll through my email on that widget without having to open up the app. Oh, so that was fairly okay. cool. And I have like yeah. five different emails. And so I had five different email widgets open. And uh, I, uh, okay. so if I didn't have to open the app and like, just open the app, but yeah. <laughs> it was a, no, that's cool. no, I mean, it makes sense for email. Yeah. I can see email being like a good reason to have a, an interactive widget. I right, take it back. Maybe interactive widgets do this, but I do, I hate how they took away the today view on the app. I do 15, dude. Like, you know, the today view. Yeah. Yeah. I hate I that. They, they got rid of it. Yeah. I love about iPad. Like I have that. That's what made my home screen feel like a desktop. <laughs> I get yeah. that. I, I wish they had an option where you could have one or the other. Today view yeah. or widgets on the home screen. Yeah, I know. I liked having the clean home screen, like whatever I needed in the dock, like you said, especially with iPad OS 14, you needed it in the dock in order yeah. to multitask. Now it's a little easier. I do like, I do think the multitasking got better. It, it I, did. First, when I, when, when I saw the, the keynote or whatever, I was like, Bro, this is the same exact thing. <laughs> but in in actual practice, it is a little bit better. Just the way you do things is a little bit better. From a fun, you know, from like a function thing, it's still just three applications and stuff like that. But it's a little easier to navigate. Yeah, I think. Nice. Perfect. Cool. Okay, okay, so so I got a few quick fire questions just for you. Okay. Let's do it. Uh, we already talked about what inspired you to start your channel, but just give me a quick recap on that. Uh, well, I mean, I've always been in love with tech. You know, MKBHD was a big proponent in the very beginning. And then honestly, like I said, average tech guy, Nick Fagans, if you haven't checked him out, you know, he was a big reason me, I was watching him. He was a big reason why I was like, you know what? I'm going to start this again. And man, let's see if we can do this again. Yeah. You know? Nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Favorite Apple product ever? Uh, my first Apple product was an iPod mini, the, the blue one. Nice. It had the black and white screen. Um, with that, you know the powder blue one? You mm-hmm. know the ones that came with those like powder colors yeah. back in the day? And my favorite product of all time, I mean, would it be like, would it be bad if I don't say the iPad Pro? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I'm think so. I'm going to go with the iPad Pro. Either that or the first gen iPhone, one of those two. Yeah. I would say yeah. the watch because the okay. watch is such a great extension of my phone. Because mm-hmm. I don't use, I use my iPad a lot, but you know, when I go to the gym, I don't take my iPad with me. My watch yeah. is with me when I'm working, when I'm working out, when I'm sleeping. Yeah. I, my watch is my everything. Like if I didn't have my watch, I, I don't know what I'd do. Yeah, if you if you work out without the watch, did it even happen? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I get to like the middle of my workout, I realize I forgot to start the workout. And it's like, I, it's like it, doesn't, it doesn't even matter. It's like, might as well go home now. Go for it. Dream Apple product. That's not a thing yet. Foldable iPad. Oh, I was going to say the exact same thing. Yeah, either that or I guess like an Apple car, because an Apple would probably make a cool car. But for right now, something that's a little bit more realistic, maybe like a full, yeah, a foldable iPad. Like a foldable iPad that could fold into a 12 Pro Max size device, and then... Give me a foldable Apple device that will replace my iPhone, my iPad, and my MacBook. That would just be one. Like a tri-fold, it folds into like a 12 yeah. Pro Max style phone, and then it tri-folds into like a 14-inch iPad. Yeah, and then you can dock it, and it'll be your laptop. To the Magic Keyboard or something? Yeah. That just sounds amazing. Give me one device with one USB-C cable. (laughs) Yeah. To charge charge that one device, and let me do everything off of that one device. Uh, Then I'll buy a terabyte version, you know? Yeah. Then I'll buy 32 gigs. Then I'll spend $5,000 on it. (laughs) 
But yeah. if you're going to make me buy an iPhone, an iPad, a keyboard, a MacBook, you know, I'm going to buy the cheapest ones of each one. <laughs> yeah. Man, if they, could, if they could have that and then have it come with the keyboard, that would be awesome. That would be cool, yeah. So Apple, if they're listening. Yeah. We just want one device, dude. Again, $5,000. Yeah. I will sell my house that I don't have yet. <laughs> <laughs> Any advice for a new YouTuber such as myself? Uh, advice would be um, consistency and literally just ma- like put out as many videos as you possibly can. Okay. Right? Wor- like, yeah, worry about the the information, but don't worry about what it looks like. Okay. Like, if, you- if your content is good, people will keep, will keep coming back. Right? Yeah. Because again, like I, my stuff is not special. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just because I pump out a lot of videos and for the most part, my content is pretty accurate, right? Yeah. And I, tend, and I tend to be pretty neutral too. So don't get involved in like stuff like wars. <laughs> I'm right in the middle of in like every single camp. Uh-huh. I try not to ruffle any feathers. You know what I mean? <laughs> I get that. Your videos are very entertaining. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. And it, it takes like in the beginning, like watch my first video and listen to what I sound like. I sound like this and my computer, I had this one and you know what I mean? So like your personality comes over time, you yeah. know? And then I was also, I also had like two years of vlogging with a camera in my face, right? I was doing, I was pulling the nice that, thinking that was case nice that, you know? Yeah. So yeah, just the more you do, the easier it gets, you know, and you'll be rewarded over time. Sweet. And like, don't be like, I've had lulls too. Like, don't be afraid of the lulls. You know, like, well, I've made videos where I'm still producing the same amount, but nobody's coming, mm-hmm. right? So just, like, take a step back, realize, like, why it is, like, YouTube Studio is a pretty powerful tool. Yeah. Like, you go through YouTube Studio and figure out, like, you'll go to my top five viewed videos, they're all Microsoft on the iPad Pro. So, hey, I'm going to make more Microsoft on the iPad Pro videos, you know? <laughs> That's true. I really appreciate you doing this, man. Hell yeah, no, this was fun. We'll do it again. Cool. Yeah. Cool. But yeah. I'll, no, I appreciate it. This is great.